Welcome to Stitch Lab. There are so many aspects to costume making that we can't even begin to touch on them all in this episode. So we'll just focus on a few specialty fabrics and how to work with them. We'll learn plenty of tips and secrets from our special guest, cosplay expert, Cheryl Sloboda. Hi, I'm Amanda Carestio. I'm Kate Zeinard. And I'm Meg Healy. We are the hosts of the Sew and Tell podcast, and we are very excited to start a new series for you called Stitch Lab. In each episode, we are gonna cover essential techniques and present inspiring experiments. I need to put my safety glasses on for this experiment. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> that was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Wow. Welcome to Stitch Lab. I am so excited to talk costumes today, and we have a couple of great guests to help me do that. So we have costuming expert, cosplay expert, Cheryl Sloboda, and then also we have my friend, Ginger Sheehy Tadic, who is a costume expert, semi-expert, sort of, who likes to do costumes. There we go, that's and, more it. <laughs> and is also the co-host of our sister podcast, Quilt and Tell. So Ginger, why don't we start with you? You tell me a little bit about your costume experience. Yeah, well, it all starts with you two. This is a Con Crunch reunion. We did a series for So Daily called Con Crunch Challenge, and it was basically we gave cosplayers two hours to complete a project, you know, so they were really in the crunch, and it was so much fun. You guys can see that at So Daily com so many wonderful tips and mm -hmm. it's just really entertaining too I have a daughter who was nine at the time she's 11 now full-blown cosplayer loves it Cheryl was actually the one though to kind of bring this whole world to us so Cheryl tell us a little bit about all your expertise oh my gosh well I uh, went to school for theater costuming and uh, worked for a long time in the comic book industry so I got really surrounded by cosplayers and I thought this is it. This is what I want to do. And uh, I love cosplay. I'm a cosplayer myself from the early 90s till now. Back when it didn't have the name cosplay, you were just a bigger nerd than the other nerds. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I love uh, this world of cosplay so much so that I have a company called So Much Cosplay. And we make all kinds of cool tools for cosplayers and curated notions for cosplayers to use. So it's a lot of fun. <laughs> awesome. Well, as we mentioned earlier, one of the huge things about sewing for cosplay or, or costuming in general is uh, working with a whole bunch of weird different fabrics that aren't like the standard things you go for. So Cheryl knows everything about this. So we're gonna have her give us some tips on sewing on some trickier fabrics. And we're gonna start off by asking about vinyl. I've got this little sample here. It's this lovely rose gold and if I want to sew something out of this lovely fabric here, what do I need to know, Cheryl? Well, the thing about vinyl is that vinyl loves to stick to not just the foot of the machine, but the, the base of the machine, the throat plate of the machine as well. Um, it can be very tacky and, uh, and sticky. And so uh, my biggest tips are to use a non-stick or a Teflon foot if your machine comes with one or if you can get one that fits your machine. That would be the number one tip because as you are top stitching the bottom of your foot is going to drag on that sticky vinyl and can cause skip stitches and all kinds mm. of bad stuff so you want to have something that'll glide right through well I am lucky because I have a Teflon foot so I am going to be planning to use that when I test this out later in the lab but what if I can't find a Teflon foot what 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 should I do then so there's, I actually have two tips. One of them is if you have your standard foot, you can actually put a piece of cellophane tape on the bottom of the foot. And that cellophane tape, um, if it's the satin kind, uh, then you can uh, basically get a similar effect that, than a Teflon foot. But you just wanna make sure that you uh, cut out the little hole for where your needle goes through that, that, uh, that right. tape. 
The other tip is to use your leftover uh, tissue paper from your patterns uh, to uh, put on the top or the bottom, and that will help the machine grip that instead of the get stuck with the vinyl. <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome. great. That's so brilliant. Those are two great tips, especially if you don't if you need to sew it right now. You're in mm -hmm. the crunch and you don't have time to go get a Teflon foot. All right. Well. The fabric that I've got is one I've never worked with before, and that is sequence. So I've got like kind of two different ones. I wasn't sure whether you need dealt with them differently, but yeah, how do you cut it? And then what, are there any tips for sewing with it? Well, this is uh, can be a really tricky fabric, but everybody loves how beautiful sequins look in their garment. And so uh, the first thing is, is you are going to uh, have to uh, trace out your patterns on the reverse side, on the, the non sequin side. Then mm -hmm. uh, in the seam allowance, you are going to actually trim away as much of the sequins as you can. And you don't have to go all the way to the edge of the, the uh, seam allowance, but you do want anywhere your stitching is going to be, you want those sequins to mm. be removed. You don't want your machine to actually hit any of those sequins. Again, it causes skip stitches and things like that. So you're going to want to trim away and all those sequins are sewn down by a little thread. So you should be able to just trim them right away and uh, it'll leave you some sequins. <laughs> yeah. I was that, gonna say, it might uh, be a little messy. Be a little bit everywhere, but yeah. Well, <laughs> that's happening even though it's we haven't started. So uh, true. But you know what? <laughs> a, little, <laughs> a little sparkle everywhere is awesome. And then, fur. Everybody loves to use this for costumes and stuff like that. And the tip that Cheryl told me was that instead, so you don't get fur flying everywhere, is to actually not cut it on the front, but to cut it on the back. Right, Cheryl? Yeah, so uh, this tip is really amazing because if you just start hacking into the fur, you're going to give that fur this terrible haircut. And wow. <laughs> what happens is the uh, fur length or the fur pile, you want to keep that in your project. And mm -hmm. so if you just cut it with scissors, it's going to actually trim away the hair uh, that you're trying to keep. But if you draw your pattern on the back with like a marker and then you you just cut through the the fabric backing and not all the way down to the fur with your X-Acto knife or a tiny pair of scissors, you're gonna preserve the length. Plus there's less shed. You don't have uh, all that fur in your studio or all over you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, yep, it's so true. Now that is a great tip. I know, yep, your little X-Acto knife makes all the difference. Yes, it does. All right, so we've talked a little bit about sewing sequins and vinyl and faux fur, or at least cutting the faux fur. Um, so why don't we head over to the lab and give these a try? Let's do it. All right, we're here in the lab with our cute little coats and we are ready to stitch some costume fabric. So we're gonna start with the vinyl and I have my Teflon foot here, so I need to install that in the machine. And I have a couple more things that I believe about sewing vinyl. So I'm gonna check with Cheryl to make sure I'm not being silly about anything. So first of all, I have my pieces. I have two pieces here and they're held together with wonder clips because pinning vinyl is bad. Isn't that right? That's right. Yeah, you don't want to use pins because you're going to put holes in all that beautiful surface on your vinyl. So clips is better. Right, and, and holes in vinyl never go away. In fabric, they'll close up. In vinyls, they won't. So clips here. The other thing I think think is the way it should be done is a slightly longer stitch length. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, you are uh, trying to get through a lot of fabric. So you do want to extend your stitch length just a little bit. All right. So I've got mine just a little bit above three millimeters and I'm just going to change out my foot real quick. Nice and simple. Yep. Nice and easy on this machine. Oh yeah. That heavy duty. It's great. Oh, oh, that's just moving like butter. Oh yeah, that really is. I The tip on the Wonder Clips was amazing because it would not, as a quilter, it never would have dawned on me not to use pins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that is so great. Okay, now 
Do you iron? Do you not iron? It depends. Uh, some of the vinyls can take a low, very low temperature iron with uh, parchment paper or something covering it. Okay. But um, you can also open up that seam and do a top stitch if you really feel like you oh, want. Oh, yeah. That. Ooh, yeah, and that I would think, be cool. I think before you start, I would do a little finger press mm -hmm. too, just kind of push it down, make it try to go. Yeah. And then, yeah, I could just go ahead and stitch here on the same side as the uh, seam allowance and just hold it down. And that Teflon foot is going to make that easy and smooth. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Awesome. That was a lot easier than I was afraid it would be. <laughs> Thanks for all the tips, Cheryl. No problem. All right. Next. We're going to tackle sequence. Sequence. All right, I've got my sequence laid out. I went ahead and went with the bigger sequences instead of the smaller ones because it feels a little less intimidating. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. Um, so Cheryl, what is the first thing that I want to do? Well, um, when you're cutting these, again, you don't want to use your good scissors because that could nick a sequin and then it will the scissors won't cut other fabrics well. So use a scissor that you're that are still good for your fabric, but not quite your your top level shears. All right. Well, I'm just going to use these for right now. Um, OK, so I've got the right scissors. What else? And you just go ahead and cut through all of the uh, the the sequins to the you know the edge of the, the pattern that you might be cutting so for you i think you're just cutting a straight line <laughs> okay so just do i want to do it on the line where the sequence is or because i don't um, want to cut yeah. through it do i or just does it matter where you're going to end up cutting through some of them they're going to fall off don't worry about it <laughs> okay if you had a, oh. a rotary cutter blade that was a little old and maybe not the best could you cut it with rotary mm -hmm. cutter Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you just don't want to use your really good one. Use one that's a little bit older. <laughs> Ooh, and we got a nice little pile. <laughs> and you had suggested earlier to kind of hold on to these though in case you have to go in, right? Yeah, you're going to remove some uh, some sequins additionally here too um, in your seam allowance. If you have like a 5 8 seam allowance, then okay. right at that 5 8 inch area, you're going to clip the threads where the, the sequins are being held to the background fabric. Yes, we have a seam ripper. Seam ripper, please. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm ready for surgery. And okay. you're just going to pull those sequins away. And you're just trying to do this so that your machine needle doesn't strike any of these sequins as it's making it seam. That was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So I think that might make me rethink the type of sequence that I'm trying to mm. uh, pick out, depending on time. If I've got a lot of time and I really it, it works, I'll, I'll definitely keep that in mind. But I have it all set up in my machine. I basically did that on both sides of my fabric and lined it up. You have like just a straight seam straight across. So I have that all set up. And then Cheryl, you had suggested putting using the zipper foot. Why the zipper foot? Right. So because a zipper foot allows you to get really close to a zipper, it does the same thing. It allows you to get really close to those sequins without actually sewing over them. Nice. All right. OK, let's give it a try. I don't want to hurt my machine. So let's see if, if this really worked. You can do it, Ginger. All right. I think I can. So far, so good. Take my pins out here. Oh yeah, it doesn't sound like I'm hitting any of them. Nice. I think I did it. Awesome, sounds Yay. great. Yes. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see how it looks. Dun, dun, dun. All right, oh, I didn't do so bad. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good to me. What do you think, Cheryl? Look yeah, good? Yeah, I think it looks great. And you know, right. again, if there's a little bare spot, you have your extra sequins mm -hmm. to just fill yep. in. I got my little pile here, so I can just go in and just do that one little stitch, right? So all that yep. work I did taking it out, and I got to put it all back in. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, all right. not all of them. <laughs> no, not all of them, thank goodness. All right, well, I think I've gotten at least a little more over my fear of sequence, so I think I'm still going to need a lot of practice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're, they're, they are, they're an investment in time and patience, for yes. sure. Yeah. 
All right, well, let's move on to something that I have worked with before, and that's faux fur. Okay, so faux fur, when working with the faux fur, and Cheryl, yet again, back me up on this, uh, you get it everywhere. If you use like just your plain regular scissors when you go to cut in, it really kind of just goes everywhere. So the tip that Cheryl had shown me was you want to use your X-Acto knife. Mm -hmm. The idea is that you're just going to be trimming the back, so you're only getting that there. And you can take your pattern, put it on top of it, and then you just want to trace around it. I'm just going to do a quick little straight line here and show you guys how easy this really is. I do feel like I'm in surgery now. All right, you kind of dig in a little, right, Cheryl? Yeah, you want to just cut that knit backing that all the fur is attached to, but not push all the way down to your table surface. You just want that cut just through that fabric backing. Okay, and you can kind of hear it and feel it. Like, it's definitely loud. So just keep on pulling. Can I give it a little try? Please, yeah, finish up that seam and then we'll we'll see how much fur we have flying. Hopefully not a lot. <laughs> it's a good thing you're wearing lab coats. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go, it's free. It's free, all right, let's see what we got. All right, so I'm gonna flip it over like this just so we can kind of see what happened here. All right, oh my God, look at that, there's like none. Like it really, like I know I've gone in and cut with uh, scissors and it's just kind of gone everywhere, but that really does make a huge difference. Yeah, not a spit. Oh, well, okay. Okay, there's we had a little bit, a little bit of fur, but. Tiny little ball, but that hardly even counts. I kind of, when I look at this, I envisioned like having blue hair by the end of cutting it. So I feel <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like that really does make a huge difference. And then I think like the biggest tip when it comes to sewing with it is the pile, right? So if you're sewing two pieces together, you just want to make sure that your pile is all going in the same direction. Right. Yeah, that's the hugest tip I have is to make sure that your uh, fur is laying in the same direction and also to tuck all of the extra pile out of the way, like tuck it into the seam allowance mm -hmm. so you have less brushing to do at the end. Awesome tips. I have learned so much about sewing on specialty fabrics today. Thank you so much for joining us, Cheryl. It is just so wonderful to have your expertise. Thank you guys for having me. Bye. All right, we learned so much about working with specialty fabrics today. What do you think, Ginger? Did you learn anything? I did, and I feel like I've gotten over some fears. Like, I feel like I can For definitely, sure. I've never worked with uh, the uh, vinyl, but I feel like I'm definitely ready to do that. And mm -hmm. then also that sequence. So, yeah. I'll tell you a secret. I knew a lot of the theory of mm -hmm. what she was talking about, but I had never actually done a nice. lot of it. And That's so I feel so much better now having actually used my hands to do some of this That's stuff. right, the joy of the lab. <laughs> yes, exactly. So thank you so much for joining me today and thank all of you as well. We'll see you on the next episode of Stitch Lab.